Yeah, I'd really like to praise the Lord. Um, I got to, as you can tell, I'm extremely nervous. Um, I got witness to in 1981. I was brought up in an incredibly religious family. I actually had a Pentecostal background. I had parents that were spirit-filled, an older brother that was spirit-filled. I'd been taken through the Catholic Pentecostal system to the um, various churches that were people, where people were receiving the Holy Spirit when I was a young child. And uh, with my father, we'd gone to many different things. And um, so speaking in tongues was never anything new. But by the time I was 14, I you know, I said to my parents, I'm no longer a Catholic, I don't want to go to church, I, I, you know, it was just so boring for me, and um, I left there, I didn't go to anywhere at all, and then one day I was walking down the mall in my early 20s, by this stage I'd been travelling around Australia, I'd been backpacking, I was a drinker and a smoker and a swearer and just like every other teenager, and um, I bumped into some young people and they were having an outreach, and they stopped to talk to me and the person I was with, and the person I was with was actually like going to a spirit-filled church and was a Catholic charismatic actually and they just ended up arguing and while they were arguing the things they were saying were things I had never ever heard I had never heard that receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues were connected I never heard that you had to have the Holy Spirit I never heard that it was being born again it was just like a whole new um um outlook on the Bible was being opened up to me and I remember you know standing there just being really rude and blowing smoke in their face and all this kind of stuff but inwardly I was just taking in everything they said because it was so different when I was growing up I was told by the by the people that I knew that were spirit filled that getting the Holy Spirit was only for very special people and I wasn't special I was a drinker and I was a smoker and I you know and just God gave it to special people who had special ministries and here I was hearing Jesus died for everyone everybody could have the Holy Spirit everyone would know they would all speak in tongues and it was just like a it was just the most amazing thing I ever heard and then even though I showed them that I was disinterested and said you know I was was being really quite rude as people do when you're witnessing to them on the street as, as I walked away, they said to me, you know, on the day of judgment, you've got no excuse because you heard the words of truth. And it was like they stuck a knife in me. I walked away and it was, it was in me and I couldn't get it out. I just couldn't stop thinking about what they said. I was barmaiding in the wheat belt at the time. I drove out there, I was sort of trying to think, oh, it will fade, it will, it will go away. And it didn't. It just became bigger and bigger in my mind so much so that I had to drive down to go to a meeting. And I remember going into the first meeting at the Morley Hall and sitting in the back row thinking, nobody knows I'm here. Of course, everybody knew I was there. And, um, and listening to the talk, it went over my head. I, I didn't really understand it. But at the end, Pastor Allen, who was pastoring at the time, said, does anybody want to receive the Holy Spirit? And I just put my hand up because I just so much wanted to know if it was true. It was so different to anything I'd ever heard. And I went out to the creche to pray with two of the officers from the church. I got down on my knees and they said to me, say hallelujah, you know, and I just started to say that very quietly and very quietly I received the Holy Spirit and I spoke in tongues and it was the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me in my life and I mean I was a really loud person, I'd been a Jillaru, I'd been, you know, I was really rough and there I was on my knees before the Lord very quietly speaking in tongues and I just had tears rolling down my face, I was so excited that the Lord was true and that he would save me, he would give me the Holy Spirit and not only that, I knew that that was what everybody needed. And um, so I went back to the wheat belt, quit my job. I was back at the next meeting, got baptised by full immersion. And that was uh, 30 years ago now. And it's just been the most wonderful time in the Lord. My life really changed at the start, as you can imagine, the swearing, the drinking, the smoking, all that kind of you know wild lifestyle left pretty well straight away. Um, the Lord was just wonderful to me, healed me of smoking within a week. I never drank after I got the Holy Spirit. And then, um, you know, spent uh, time just growing in the Lord and learning things in the Lord and, you know, just being a young person in the Lord and having a lot of fun. Uh, a few years down the track, got married and had three children. And um, it's been wonderful bringing those children up in the Lord and um, seeing the Lord really work and heal and bless. Um, and then a couple of years ago, you know, after you go on in the Lord, you, things go wrong and you know what to do. I'm going to get down. I'm going to pray. The Lord's going to fix it. It's just the way life is and it's fantastic. And a couple of years ago, I became really unwell and um, there wasn't any particular uh, reason. Something actually happened, which, you know, my mind didn't really cope with very well. 
And, um, and I just didn't know what to do. I, I thought, I've been in the Lord a long time. I should know the answers to all these things. I know what to do. And, and I thought, okay, I'll just up the prayer life. I'll just, you know, um, do what it is that I've heard all these years. And, and I did that. But I really developed a, a quite a bad anxiety issue over it. And instead of getting better, I felt I was getting worse. And, and it went on for some time. And I'd go and see the doctor and do this and that and the other. And... and and in the midst of it, listening to those testimonies yesterday, I, I could really relate to them because I'd been in the Lord a long time. I should know what to do. That's what I thought. And so I started to think, okay, perhaps the Lord's upset with me. Perhaps there's, something's wrong. Um, you know, if I tell anyone, they're going to think, well, what sort of a trial is that? You know, you've been in the Lord a long time. Just all this kind of stuff that people, that I shouldn't have thought, and nobody would have thought that. That was just me. I was thinking that, and I started to really lose my, my confidence and my trust, and, and I, I didn't feel I could tell anyone, except my husband knew. And the whole time, he just supported me, which is what I heard yesterday in the testimonies, which I could really relate to. And of course, the prayer did work. It was just me, you know, worrying, thinking I'm not going to get better, perhaps I'm going to get worse, but it did work. And, and over the time, instead of becoming weaker and, and going to the doctor and, and perhaps ending up on some form of medication to help me, the Lord did strengthen me. He did help me. And over the weeks and the months, I, I just became well, whereas one day I remember looking back and thinking, this is possibly one of the most marvellous healings I've ever had in my life because... You know, it was just such a big thing. And I think the thing was that I, I thought I, I knew what to do, but that was probably my problem. I really needed to seek the Lord. I really needed to get on my knees and pray and, and just trust him like I did when I first got saved. And the Lord brought me around the whole circle. And, and the whole time I knew the answer was with the Lord. There was never any doubt. I just kept thinking, when's it coming? When's it coming? When's it coming? A bit impatient. But, you know, the Lord has really blessed me. He's blessed my life. I love being spirit-filled. I love being in the Lord. Um, it just gets better. Every day gets better. And, and he's just there. And I just can't wait for the day that he comes back to claim us.